Hello, Julie here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, thank you for joining me and um, I hope if you enjoy my video, you might consider clicking that subscribe button. Okay, so today I'm going to be creating another page in my current journal. I'm making this journal using the digital kit from Sunflowers and Doors and it's called Sunflowers and Labradors. And I will put a link to that in the description box below. So uh, this was the uh, project I made the other day. And today I'm going... And this, I've also got a video on how I made this one. I'll link um, a playlist in the, in the description box below that shows everything that I've done making this journal. So today I'm going to add something in the second... Um, signature and I'm going to put it on this page here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a couple of slip pockets and put um, some postcards in them so it's a pretty straightforward project um, but interesting just the same I think now yeah, this is just a plain coffee dyed piece of paper I figured that I would put it on this page because you've still got plenty of journaling space here you can write on there, no problem at all. And plus I'm going to put two postcards in here, so they will be a coffee bat, coffee paper bat, so you'll be able to write on those as well. And I thought this paper blended in nicely. I did have um, a couple of others to consider, I thought that one, but that one looks a bit too busy to me. And this one here, which I quite like as well. But um, I decided to go with this one because I really love that hat. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this paper down so that it fits inside of my stitching. I will um, actually stitch on this piece as well. But um, so I'm going to trim it down to there and I'm going to trim it down to there. So let's do that to get started. So how is everybody? Everything is good here. It's, well, it's Saturday when I'm filming this. I'm not quite sure when I'll actually get around to editing it and uploading it. But um, it's a nice day here. Yeah, so I hope everybody is well and uh, spending plenty of time on their favourite pastime. Maybe that's whatever craft or activity that might be. Okay, so let's have a look at this. So that fits in there great. So the reason I trimmed it down was because I didn't want to have any interference when I turn the page. I want that to turn smoothly. Now, um, these are the postcards. That, well... These are the choice of postcards. There's about um, eight postcards, I think, in this kit. And I've just printed out a few. I've printed out, I've printed out a page twice, but I've used some already. So these are what I've got left, and these are what I'm going to be choosing from. So these are going to go into my slip pockets. So I need to work out where I want my pockets to go. And using this, these as my size guide. So I think that, um, I've got a ruler here somewhere, for my page is, let's get that up the right way, so my page is uh, oh, just, just over seven and a half inches, so half of that's three and three quarters. Um, so if I go about here and then I don't want it in the middle, so if I go, say, I have to have enough room for this one, or for the bottom one, to come above. Where do I put that mark? No idea. What did I say? Three and three quarters. Yeah, well that would be okay. So I could put one at um, three and three quarters. In one at say 
and a quarter from the top. So two and a quarter and three and three quarters. So if I put two and a quarter and three and three quarters. I think I might lift that one up a bit. Three and three quarters and halfway up there. It's one and a half, one and three eighths. Let's say one and a half. It'll be one and a half and three and three quarters. How will that look, do we think? Do that. If I put that in there and that goes down to the bottom, that will still poke out. Okay, let's do that. So, on the back of this, I'm going to make a mark at one and three quarters. Well, I'll come over here, make a mark at one and three quarters, and two, uh, three and three quarters, and then over here we'll make one and three quarters and three and three quarters, and then we can draw a line. Going straight, mm -hmm. and up on the marks, do they? So this is the back, so it's not going to matter. Mm -hmm. I don't really want to cut them crooked. Now, how wide do I want these? So, these uh, postcards have to fit in it. So, they are three inches. I'm going to say three inches. And this is five and a half. So, I've got two and a half inches. So, I can come in an inch and a quarter from each side. So, I'll come in. I'm actually going to come in. Uh, an inch and three sixteenths so I'm going to have a little bit of a gap uh, an inch and three sixteenths it's not actually marked on here the sixteenths but um, that's true so that's about there so I'm just going halfway between. So an inch and two, three. Oh, it's right on that line. Okay. This must be crooked. So I'm going to go there. Okay, so draw a line there. Use my T rule so I know I'm getting it straight. And here, so if you haven't um, got a T ruler, they are very handy for making sure that you've got everything lined up straight. There is a little ridge there that lines up with your paper edge, and that ensures that this part is then straight or level, should I say. Or at 90 degrees, let's put it that way. Okay, now the reason I've put the lines there is because that's where I know how I know where to cut. Now I'm looking for my hole punch. I could use my cropper dial because that will give me a small hole. But I don't know whether it will reach in that far. Not quite. There is a way of adjusting these, but 
I've never adjusted mine. It doesn't look like it wants to move anyway. So I think that guide is back as far as it can go. So I'm going to have to use this one. Well, that doesn't fit either. Okay, so um, I have got... Oh, no. So what I'm going to have to do then, I'll have to have a square edge. So I'm going to take my... ruler and my knife on my cutting mat and I'm going to cut just below that line and just above that line with my ruler firmly and using my the lines I've marked on there I'm going to cut a slit and stopping at the lines I'm going to cut just on the other side of that line because the rule is clear I can actually see where that line is and I'm going, whoops, I'm going to cut that across there like so and then I can turn it sideways and just cut piece out there and there and we have ourselves a nice little slip now let's make sure that our mm, postcard doesn't quite fit in so I'm going to have to make that a fraction longer Okay, so now I'm going to do the bottom one. So, same idea. With these rulers, you've got one sloped edge and you use that for your you know, uh, drawing lines and things on. This edge has got um, a metal piece in the middle and um, that's the edge you use for cutting. Okay, so let's check if that one fits in there, yes. Okay, now before I go any further, I'm going to choose my postcards that I want to put in there. probably want the lighter postcards so that they stand out a bit from the background. That'll go in there like that. Yeah, so I think I'll use, although, maybe like that, because um, oh yeah, that's alright, because they can have the whole dog showing out. Okay, alright, so what I need to do with them is back them with coffee dyed paper because they are printed on thicker paper but it's not cardstock 
I've got some coffee dyed papers here. So I will attach these using my art letter glue. Actually, um, I reckon I had some smaller pieces here that probably do the job. These um, coffee dyed papers that I'm using are just, um, you know, off cut ones that weren't weren't perfect. So I just use them for backing stuff. I do have the coffee dyed papers in my Etsy shop and my Kofi shop, so I'll put a link to those in the description box. If you buy a coffee dyed paper from me. It won't be these reject ones, it will be proper undamaged ones. <laughs> so yeah, I'll just use these damaged ones for backing things. Good use for them, I think. Very good use for them. So once I've got these um, stuck down, I'm going to take my page and these postcards to my sewing machine and I'm going to stitch around them. I will also ink around them because I like that look. Okay, I'll be back soon. Okay, so I have created my two postcards and stitched around those. And I have also stitched around my page and I stitched around the slits as well. I haven't done that before and I was a bit dubious about doing it, but it worked fine. Now, for some reason, it suddenly dawned on me that that in there that one's fine because you know, I'm going to stick this on the page but when I put this one in here well it can drop right down to the bottom so and then you'll never be able to get it out so what I've done is I've created another journaling card so it's not a postcard but it's a journaling card and I've cut this one so that it's 3 inches by 7 inches. And then that one will go in there and go right down to the bottom and still poke out the top. So that is what I have done there so that the postcard doesn't fall all the way in. And I've still got two, two things in my pockets. Okay, so now all I have to do is add this to my journal. So I'm going to stick that down there all around. I'm going to just stick it around the edges of course because I want to be able to slide my pieces in and out. It doesn't matter if I come in a bit and um, that won't hurt. I don't want to go along the bottom very wide though go in about where the stitching is. I do want to make sure I've got a good good connection though because uh, you know this is an interactive page and people are going to be moving things in and out of it so I want to make sure it's got a good stick well well attached should I say. Okay so now let's position that so that it's inside of those stitching lines that are already on the page and attach that down like so. I'm going to go over that with my bone folder just to make sure that I have got a good grip on everything there and that is firmly attached. So now I can pop 
well I'll let this dry at the bottom first I'll give that a few minutes to dry and I'll think about what I'm going to do to embellish this because when I've got these in there actually I'm going to trim that down a little bit That's, that would annoy me if I had to fiddle with that every time I wanted to put it in and out so I'm just going to trim the slightest piece off and see how that goes much better much better now um, by the looks of that I haven't inked around the journaling card or that piece there put my pin back in my glue bottle otherwise we know what will happen okay so I'm going to just ink around the edges of these did ink around the edge of my page and my pockets so inking of course is not compulsory but I do like the look of it and I will ink around both the front and the back Okay, so that's my inking done. Now, if I had have used a hole punch to round the corners on this, I would have rounded the corners on my two inserts as well, just to go with the same look. But because I haven't, I haven't rounded the corners on these. Okay, so I think this dry would be dry enough on the bottom, so that can go in there like so. And this one can go in there right so so that's those now um decoration on here what can we put on there i have got a little bag here of fussy cuts that i have fussy cut from this collection so let's have a look what we could put down there Do something like that. I could make something a little bit smaller using something like that. What's this? What is this? There we go. Something that I had looks like I had thought to use on something else and didn't get around to using it. I might put that on there, I think. And um, sideways. Where'd I put that? Daisy. Put that. And um, I think I need. I think I need something else in amongst that. And I could use that, or I could use just a piece of plain coffee dyed paper, just to break that up a little bit. 
think I will. I think I will. Yes. All right. So that. Let's get some of this stuff out of the way. Uh, am I happy with those flowers or do I want? Oh, I think I like those flowers. They're big enough. So let's pack this up. I'm going to use that. So there's lots and lots of um, ephemera in this kit that you can print and, and uh, fussy cut. I've already used a whole heap of this and I've still got heaps here. Some of it's just off cuts that I thought I might be able to use in various ways. I haven't cut the dogs out because I thought I'd use the dogs um, in a different journal. This one I'm just sort of concentrating on the sunflower, so this is going to be more a sunflower journal. Actually, I might leave a couple of these out. I might make a couple of dangles to go on these. I'll show you how these um, are meant to go together. So they're the same. There's a... There we go. That's the nice. So, it's like that. Have I got another big one? Yes, here we go. Oh no. There we go. So there, there, there. Okay. These are a bit fiddly, aren't they? Picking them up. Pop them in here out of the way. So they don't end up all over the place. Now, then, let's have a look what we've got here. How big do we want this? So... and a half and see what we think of that. Yes, that will be... Actually, I wouldn't mind it a bit longer, to be honest, although how much space have we got here? Yeah, I think I would like a little bit longer. And let's see what I've got that I can use. Another scrap. Here's a scrap. So this one I'm going to make. How much longer would I like it? Let's say another half an inch, so let's make it three inches. This one's not as wide either, so that's... Uh, that's good. I'll pop that on there like that, and then my flower on there like that. Yeah, so like that. Um, I have noticed that this one's got rounded corners, but is that going to be a problem? I don't think so. All right, so... Um, I'm going to... Uh, ink around the edges of these and I'm going to take that piece of coffee dyed paper this one to my sewing machine and stitch around that too so I'll go and do that I'll ink around everything stitch around that and when I've got that done I'll come back I have had another change of heart because I've thought of a way that I can stop this one from falling down behind and it uses these so these are meant to be dangles and you can see that I have um, 
inked around the edges and stitched around them as well. Now I'm going to use these and I'm going to attach that onto where on the top I think. Oh well on here on the plain area. And then I can put that in there and this will stop it slipping down. So to do that I'm going to use a brad and I'm going to use a black brad. And I do have some in here, so I will use these. And I'm going to put them on both. Now I'm going to use my crocodile and I'm going to position them where I want them, like so. And then I'm going to punch my hole about there. Put my brad in there. And then seal that shut. If I can get my fingers to work and get that done. There we go. I'm going to squeeze that tight. And there we go. Now I'm going to do that the same on this one. Put that up this end. to see when you've got that paper stuck in there. Okay, we've got them like that. Put the hole there. Put the bread. And seal that up. didn't get that one in properly. Let's see if I can fix it up. That feels better. Okay, so now let's get this out of the way. So now I can put these in here and that and slip over there like that and it stops it falling down. That one doesn't need it but it's got it. So I'm going to trim them off of there. Okay, perhaps I should have put one on the other side but it's done now. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. So that can that stops it from falling down behind and this one of course is down as far as it can go so that's not going to go anywhere but it still looks pretty on there doesn't it now I'm going to attach these and I was thinking I might add a little bit of lace behind that I've got some coffee dyed laces I've got a little doily here oh, that's a bit too lost doesn't it and um, I could just use some cheesecloth. I think I will use just a bit of cheesecloth in there. I've used cheesecloth on other parts of this, so that will certainly carry through. With the theme. that behind that or do I want it behind that or do I want it behind between these two I think I might put it on that one like that and then this can go like so put it out further can go like that Actually, I might. Let's stick some of this down, eh? Because it's too fiddly. Right. So.
So stick this down. You could just stick this on two sides and turn it into a tuck, but um, I'm going to stick the whole thing down. I'm going to stick it over to the side like so. So, you know, you could put this, this, and here you've got a tuck there. Now I'm going to put this, I want it sort of on a bit of an angle so that it sticks out the bottom and the side of my, of this. Yeah, like that. It's pretty good. So let's just stick that down like so. And when this is dry, I will um, I will go and pull some of those threads out. You saw I just went over my stitching with my bone folder. That just helps to flatten that back of the stitching out so that it's not so risen and. Um, helps to you know keep your journal a bit bit thinner. We do tend to overdo these things, don't well I think I'm speaking for a lot of other people when I say we do. I know I certainly do. And from what I've seen on Facebook and YouTube, a lot of other journalers are the same, or journal creators. I don't actually use a journal. Um, I just love making them so I want to stick that in there, do I? Okay, so let's grab a tissue and just make sure we've got that nicely attached. So there we go, our cute little. They look really nice, I reckon. I'm very happy with that idea, actually. And in hindsight, if you were thinking of doing the same thing, I would probably put this one over this side so that, you know, they're not directly below each other. All right, so uh, yeah, now I'm going to pull some of these threads out. Make this a little bit more tatty. But I'm holding this in place because, um, as you know, I've only just glued it, so I don't want to pull the whole thing to pieces at this stage. Okay. All right, so you can't really see that cheesecloth behind there, but you can certainly, in real life you can, you can see the texture. So there's a bit of a close-up for you. So now I've got this uh, journaling card spare. I'll be able to use that somewhere else in the book, in the journal. So yeah. All right. Well, that's my project for today. I hope you've enjoyed my video. Um, if you have, I'd love it if you would uh, give me a thumbs up and um, leave me a comment. And yeah. Well. Thank you for joining me and I hope you can join me when I post my next video. Okay, bye.